Uh, I think, and it, it is kind of difficult because we're looking at what did Jesus say publicly versus with his apostles in private? Um, and what did he say explicitly versus implicitly? And then what he did and how people interpreted him. So when mm -hmm. I look at the, uh, you know, I, I think Dominic's correct about the coins. All right, so Caesar was called the son of God. He was called the savior of the world. Um, in fact, um, there, there were kings back then that were called king of kings and lord of lords <laughs> before Jesus. So these aren't titles that were just unique to Jesus, okay? Um, however, did Caesar, did they really think that they were gods? Well, I think we've got some evidence that uh, Gaius Caligulus and Nero did. Um, I don't know if the others did really think that they were God when the Senate conferred divine honors on them. I mean, how can senators who are mere humans confer divinity on someone when they're human? You know, humans can't confer divinity. So how much they really believed that they were divine is one thing. When we come to Jesus, if, if all we had were the virgin birth accounts in Matthew and Luke, then I'd kind of go with that and say, maybe this is what the Christians meant. But we got more, much more than that. Um, You've got Paul, who says that Jesus, in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, he's the creator of the universe. You have him in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, it says he's the creator and sustainer of the universe. You have Paul in Colossians, or Philippians 2 that says Jesus existed in form, in the role of God, prior to his incarnation. And then he comes down, okay, and then Jesus is... Well, he's known as a powerful miracle worker. Whether you want to attribute those miracles to psychosomatic things, he was still, uh, virtually every scholar who studies this stuff acknowledges that Jesus performed deeds that astonished crowds and that both he and his followers regarded as divine miracles and exorcisms. So have, it seems like Paul is out there saying in pretty clear terms that Jesus is the creator, the sustainer of the universe. He existed in the form of the role of God. Now, we can tell that Jesus, or, or Paul, we can verify that he's preaching the same gospel message as the Jerusalem apostles. He went up to them in Galatians 2, ran it by them, got it confirmed by them. So if Paul's preaching these things, this basic gospel message, certainly that would have had to include something as basic as who Jesus was, his identity. And it seems like this is what the Jerusalem apostles were preaching. So we've got to ask him, where do these pious monotheistic Jews get the idea that Jesus is God? And I can't think of any other plausible reason than that Jesus himself made claims to this effect. And so then when we come to the Gospels, we say, do they give us any signs of this? And you come to Mark, the first Gospel. It's biography. It's there to illustrate, illuminate who Jesus is through his deeds. What are his deeds? Well, it opens up. As Isaiah the prophet said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. It's not Jesus preparing the way of God, it's John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. Mark chapter 2, he heals a paralytic and forgives him his sins. The Jewish leaders say, that's blasphemy, only God can forgive sins. Chapter 3, they say it's his exorcisms is Satan casting out Satan, and Jesus says, no, it's me binding the strong man Satan and plundering his kingdom from souls. Chapter 4, he, he calms the wind. The Old Testament says something God does. Chapter 5, he raises the dead. Something the Old Testament says only God does. Chapter 6, he walks on the water. Something the Old Testament says only God does. The whole Gospel of Mark is painting this portrait of Jesus as God through his deeds. So this is what the earliest Christians are saying. This is based on the eyewitness testimony of what Mark gets from Peter of what happened. So, yeah, I think he, whether he said things implicitly or explicitly or through his words or his deeds or both, I think he claimed to be more than Messiah. He claimed to be God. He claimed to be God's uniquely divine son. And that's quite different than the Senate saying Caesar is the son of God.